An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. So critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, zany, politically incorrect. Your own adult style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. Roy.com. I am back from China, and as promised, here is a video of my crazy trip. So it was actually a lot more uh, entertaining than I thought it would be because I went to uh, Philippines, China, got deported from China, over to Hong Kong unexpectedly, back into China, back over to the Philippines, and back home. So here's the story. Enjoy. So I thought I was going to China two weeks from now, but then my boss handed me a, uh, an itinerary as I was leaving work. And he said, go get your toothbrush and your passport. You're going to China in like 12 hours. So I wasn't nearly as prepared for this trip as I normally do for an international trip. First, uh, first stop was Manila, which was about 11 and a half hours away by airplane. And the really cool thing about this is that you cross the international date line. So you arrive the day prior. So I'm like a time traveler, which was pretty cool. Manila is a very crowded city. It is the most population dense city on earth. Uh, Wikipedia says there's about one and a half million people living there. I think that's a joke. There are so many people living here, they're like on top of each other. It's nuts. Um, but it's a pretty neat spot. I got to uh, hang around and mainly saw cabs and hotels there. And what I saw of the traffic made me very, very, very grateful that I didn't have to be driving in it. I swear, people in the Philippines have no regard whatsoever for their lives or the lives of the people around them. Holy crap, these people drive crazy. The next morning, I had to go into uh, China, and so I did. But China turned out to be quite the huge adventure, and I'll let me talk, you, talk to you about it right now. One does not simply walk into China. Oh no, you need a visa to do that. So I am officially getting booted out of my very first country. God knows that I've had plenty of countries in the past that I deserve to get booted out of. But this is actually the first one. So they're making me buy a ticket to Hong Kong. So I get to go be like a Pacific jet setter, like a Pacific Rim jet setter. Um, they just sort of drop me. Oh, and here they are, gotta go. All right, peeps, the saga continues. So it was either spend a night in Chinese immigration jail or spend 230 bucks on a ticket to Hong Kong. Um, I picked ticket to Hong Kong because that was the smart thing to pick. So actually the, um, the customs people were super friendly. They went and bought me a ticket to Hong Kong because they wouldn't take, um, they wouldn't take my US dollars and I just didn't have time to change anything into uh, Chinese uh, yuan. So um, yeah, so the customs folks actually bought me a ticket to Hong Kong and then I, I handed them cash because I just had a pocket full of hondos. Very last plane out of uh, China tonight over to Hong Kong. Yeah. Anyway, when I get to Hong Kong, I'll be able to get back to China because, well, then I'll be, then I'll be transmigrant again. I'll be coming in from Hong Kong and going out through Manila. So the visa that I thought would work the first time will now actually work. I just had to like fly to a totally different country because that's just how life goes sometimes. Anyway, I'm running on pure adrenaline right now and having a probably a better time than any man who just got kicked out of a country ought to be having. 
But um, yeah, so this is the, the continuing saga of adventures jet setting around the Pacific Rim. Uh, that's all I got. We'll see. Oh yeah, and the plane's delayed because of heavy fog, so it might be a really, really bumpy ride. All right, guys. Well, this is how we roll in China. Yeah, taking off some thick fog. This ought to be exciting. Alrighty. Might as well call this really snazzy glass up there. And since I paid a hundred bucks, I might as well ride the ride. Right? So I'm going up to the 20th floor. There's some more Hong Kong. Much better view. Mm-hmm. Really foggy, that's not actually light, that's fog. You can't hardly see through the city. And we're back. Now we're going down. The cars are all on the wrong side of the road, thanks to a uh, great British influence. And this thing goes down a lot faster than it goes up. Lots of buses over there. And here we are. Okay, heading to China for round two. This ought to be fun. So uh, Hong Kong was an interesting experience. All of the like 20 minutes that I saw of it. Uh, when I was getting booted out of China, I talked to my guard extensively for probably about three hours while he was making sure that I was going to get on the airplane and leave. And um, it was just, it was really fascinating to talk to him about all the opportunities that he doesn't have that I just take for granted. Uh, for example, I have the opportunity to, to choose my profession. I have the opportunity to choose what I want to do for a living. I have the opportunity to choose like what kind of food I want to eat. I have the opportunity to choose what kind of hobbies I want to have. And when I was talking to this gentleman, man, it was like these were totally foreign concepts to him. He wasn't even aware that, that you could live that way, that you could be that way, that you could live a fulfilled life. So it, was, it really made me really grateful for, for what I have, for where I live, for the opportunities that have been given to me that, uh, that just haven't been given to everybody else in the world. And, and coming to Hong Kong is just a whole different world from Shanghai. Okay, so China, round two. And now I'm actually doing the thing that I came here to do, which was to inspect a factory for a uh, subcontractor that we're working with. So yeah, this is, all the, this is the reason that I actually went to China, was to play with countertops and make sure that these guys are doing their thing correctly. Lots of interesting architecture in Shanghai, which I thought was really neat. Very, uh, very modern city. My driver tells me that the majority of Shanghai has been built in the last 15 years or so, which explains why it has such a, a modern and even futuristic look to it. It's pretty cool. There's a couple of things that I really don't understand there, like why on earth they have windows on the superhighway. Like, what, are they trying to catch a breeze or something? I don't get it. But uh, all in all, really interesting trip to Shanghai and on the way out, I figured I would do at least one touristy thing, so instead of having my driver drop me off at the airport, I had him drop me off at the Maglev station. So, here's that fun adventure. Here's Maglev. Cool. Take a look at the Maglev track this one. It's super not impressive. But I'm looking forward to going on a Maglev. I know how they work. I've just never been on one. It's a Maglev track. This is the Shanghai Maglev. Let's take it over to the airport. Supposedly it goes really fast. Alright, we're riding the Maglev train out of the station. It's as smooth as expected. See how fast the sucker goes. Moving right along, about 50 kilometers an hour.
have been a 30 to 40 minute drive, my driver tells me. <laughs> unlike, uh, unlike a train on rails, the sucker is banking right now. It didn't even have to slow down for that turn, it just banked right into it. Neat. What's up guys? This is Manila. I'm on the rooftop patio of the uh, Hotel Maranti, about 11 stories up. They have this incredibly safe looking piece of glass between me and uh, certain death, which is kind of neat. So happy, look at this thing. It's like, it's so secure. You can just like wiggle it around. Wonder if that thing meets safety code. Probably not. Anyway, Manila is a neat, uh, a neat city, but best experience from way the heck above it, man. I, I swear, the people here on the roads have no regard whatsoever for their own lives. This is uh, a fairly, this is traffic that's much crazier than anything I ever experienced in Central America. Ah, see a lot of jeepneys down here. A jeepney is like a, a jeep that's kind of on rails. It's like a, a stretch limousine of a jeep. Seats uh, probably about 14 people skyscrapers as far as the eye can see. Let's just walk over on the other side of this uh, little patio. 
another uh, another glass thingy. It's it's so secure. <laughs> yeah, don't get drunk and fall off of this balcony. You're gonna die. Anyway, a lot of construction here, a lot of growth, lots of population density. Infinity pool, that's a cool little feature. A lot of people smoke here, but this hotel is non-smoking completely. Got a um, employee over there. We got a, uh, a wonderful cart for brooms and other garbage. So that's probably a feature, right? And we'll go over here to this side. Oh, you know what, let's go up. We'll go up. Ow, 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 ow. I almost biffed it. That hurt. All right, so now I'm like three feet higher with a crazy good scrape on my elbow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's the, uh, another one of those super safe glass railings. So yeah, glad, glad to be in Manila. Really interesting town. Huge, dense, populous, and uh, just lots of, uh, lots of stuff going on here. I leave for Honolulu at about 4 p.m. and I arrive at 9 a.m. on the same day. So I'll be seeing my wife a little bit earlier this morning. Be really cool. See you guys later.